Hello everyone, this is Lori Anderson, host for Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth Radio Broadcast and contributor for FreedomOutpost.com. I'm coming to you today with updates out of Nevada. Today's date is April the 12th of 2017. April, today's date is very significant in the history of the United States of America as it was today, three years ago, that the, at the Bunkerville standoff in Nevada where the cattle were released by the BLM whom were acting unlawfully and illegally. I know that a lot of people seem to think that they were acting lawfully because there was a court order. However, what you need to know about that court order is the court order had nothing to do with killing cattle nor stealing the cattle. So, in without further ado, I'm going to give you an update from John Lamb. And I'm also going to let you hear what I know Judge Navarro, whom is over trial one, is not going to allow the jury to hear. The jury is not being allowed to hear very important and pertinent information. Thus, the defendants are not receiving a fair trial. In this situation, she is not allowing the jury to know that the BLM were killing cattle. She is not allowing them to know that the BLM were attacking innocent people that were unarmed, throwing cancer patients to the ground, going after pregnant women, and tasing individuals without cause and sicking their dogs on them. She is not allowing them to know that they were pointing semi-automatic weapons or automatic weapons at the protesters or about the First Amendment zone that they created. Thus, the jury is not going to be able to make a very well and informed decision. I guess to Judge Navarro, due process be damned, the government is stacking the deck. What's new? Stay tuned for further updates from John Lamb and from a well-respected judge, Judge Andrew Napolitano. This is one I guarantee you they would never allow the jury to see because if they did, they would have to come back with not guilty. <laughs> You know, the standoff between the feds and that rancher in Nevada, it seems to be over now. Listen to this. Those cattle are ours. They're Clive and Bundy's family's cattle. And they stole them from us. And they've realized it. They're our cows. And they get to come home. Yeah, actually, the point is, they've given the cows back. The feds had seized the rancher's cattle because the cows were grazing on federal land. They wanted to pay grazing fees. Okay, Judge, why did the, why did the feds basically back away here? I think the, the uh, feds were suffering such a terrible PR loss uh, at the hands of people who believe that there's something wrong here. This is fundamentally unfair. Look, th this rancher has had his day in court and lost. He had his day in court in a federal court in which the issue was who owns this land, you, the state of Nevada, or the federal government. In my view, that case should have been tried in a state court and not in a federal court. The federal government, even the judiciary, the federal judiciary, should not be deciding what land the federal government owns. He lost the case. Instead of resolving this in a peaceful way, instead of docketing his property with a judgment. He'd have to pay the judgment when he sells the property, just like the rest of us do if we owe money to somebody and we don't want to pay them. They swooped in with black helicopters. I don't know what co color yeah. the helicopters yeah. were, but the image is there. Yeah. With, with um, uh, assault rifles, s assault rifles yeah. uh, aimed, and, aimed and ready, and stole this guy's property, just as that woman said. They stole his cattle. They didn't have the right to do that. That's theft, and they should have been arrested by state officials for that. And just as egregious, they established something utterly repellent in America, a First Amendment zone. They established a 25 yard by 25 yard squared off area with duct tape in the middle of the desert and said, you want to protest? You can go in this square and protest. If you protest outside the square, we're going to arrest you. The square was three miles away from where these events were going. 
This is the federal government emasculating the First Amendment rights of the protesters. Do they have any right to do that, bearing in mind that some of the protesters turned up with guns? Absolutely not. And there could have been a, a gunfight? Absolutely literally. not. They have no, no uh, ability whatsoever under the Constitution to interfere with the First Amendment right of the protesters. Then what right do they have to collect the money which the rancher owes for grazing fees from way back? The rancher lost the case. I don't know if the case was fair or not, but he lost and he lost the appeal. So we'll assume for the sake of argument that, that the loss and the appeal were accurately uh, decided. The government's option is to take the amount of money he owes them and docket it. That is, file the lien on his property, which is the same thing you would do if I owed you money and refused to pay it. You can't seize my property, but you can docket your judgment on my property. And when I die or when I sell that property, the money comes off the top to you with interest, with whatever the statutory interest is. The federal government could have done that. Instead, they wanted this show of force and the resistance that they got made it sound like enough is enough with the federal government. We're drawing a line in the sand right here. And it drew people from all around the country who basically said to the feds, quit your heavy-handed theft of property and, and, and act like you're a normal litigant and not God Almighty. A lot of angles to this. Yes, there are uh, a lot Harry of Harry Reid's yes. son and a Chinese company with a big solar project. Want, wanting Why has land. Harry Reid been silent uh, about this? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, you know, there's an the energy project going on there. There's a, the, uh, the idea that government, federal and state own 84 percent of the land there. And we have 17 trillion in debt. Maybe they might want to sell some of that land. People, to your point, Judge, were pushed to their limits. This rekindled a spirit that had been fading in this country. I'm, I'm glad people stood up for, this, for the ranchers. Well said. Thanks, sir. We're, uh, it's after court here. Sorry. We're still at the Las Vegas Federal Courthouse. Uh, we got a, we was in court till after 12:30 today. My government's still presenting uh, closing arguments here in this case. I'm gonna try to go over as much as I can. As you've seen, everybody took off for the Jericho march. I'm not gonna join in the day. I'm gonna try to get. We just got like 15 more minutes to get back up into court. They gave us a really short lunch break. Uh, there's a lot to go over today. Um, one of the things, Ken Medenbach was arrested very first thing this morning, coming down here to support these men in this trial. Um, he has a court hearing himself right here in this same federal court building at 3 o'clock today. 
This is also the anniversary of the protest of the Bundy Ranch. Three years ago today, where the cows were released, where the BLM backed up and, um, and left. Right now, we're hearing all this again, just like a broken record up here in this court of what we've heard for the last um, eight weeks now. I think the day is day 27 or day 28. I'm not a positive, I didn't look at exactly my notes. But, um, so we've had a lot going on. We've had a lot of the people that have actually walked out of the courtroom today, disgusted of what's going on in there. First thing we heard was um, the government objections to the defense team on what they were going to say in their own arc opening arguments. Denying the defense team, op closing arguments, I'm sorry, denying the defense team lots of uh, exhibits and stuff in the um, closing arguments. Cutting their closing arguments down really short. Micromanaging these closing arguments. We've got, um, so far we've been the rest of the morning just with uh, closing arguments with the government up until just a few minutes ago and they're still not finished. We've got to go back. We've heard the whole case over and over again. The same videos, the same pictures of the guns, the same Except everything. One video. And one video was actually added today um, that was a little bit different, trying to show a different version of when Cliven was on the stage. And this video, I understand, was taken by an uh, undercover um, agent that was in the crowd. And he mainly took pictures of just people in camouflage and people in guns, and he wasn't really focusing on the stage. This was played to the jurors today. Um, but other than that, we've heard just cumulative evidence again, over and over again. Some of, the, some of these videos have been played dozens and dozens and dozens of times. These pictures have been played over and over and over again for the jurors to hear. We got to see the same thing over again. One thing was um, longbow videos um, of Eric Parker and Scott Drexler again. And Burleson. Those, um, what's that? And Burleson. And Burleson, Greg Burleson too. They played him but over and over and over and over and over Trying to over show again. a narrative of what Greg Burleson said of uh, when he was drunk under these um, long, in, in these long bow, uh, interviews. But Eric Parker has always maintained principle. So has Scott Drexler. And um, we was happy with some of that to be played. But some of this other stuff is cumulative. Just over and over and over again, the prosecutor just keeps stressing how dangerous this stuff looked. We had um, another gentleman that got up um, to the judge and he shouted before he walked out of the room, treason, treason to the judge. And then he was escorted out of the courtroom by the U.S. Marshals here and told he couldn't go back in. Um, again, like I said, several people have walked out, probably over half of us. There's close to 60 of us and in there. And before it was over with here, there's probably down to just 30 of us in there. These people are getting upset, emotional at these um, things that the prosecutors keep bringing up and the lies that they're presenting in these closing arguments. But I wish we would all stay because it, we need it. Does it makes us look like we can't handle what they're we saying? We really need to stay, stay, um, standing strong for these people. These defendants need to see us in there, and with so many people walking uh, out. It um, could look bad towards the jurors. We need the support in the courtroom, even if it is emotional. You got to think about these guys have been in jail now for over 410 days in jail without bond. So they really need. Um, they need us there, need us and there. they need us to be able to hear the entire prosecution, so that we know where they're at. Exactly. There's going to be no videos played to the jurors yet of the dead cows that the BLM killed. Dozens and dozens of dead cows and mass graves. That is being, cannot be played in these closing arguments. No videos of Dave Bundy being arrested. No videos of BLM misconduct. The government stated again today in their arguments with motions that there is no evidence of any BLM misconduct and the jurors don't need to be um, threatened again with jury nullification in this case. It was, they keep stressing it was their lawful legal duty and that they were only doing what they were supposed to do exactly. by court orders and all we had to do was appeal yeah just appeal it if you don't like the decision but you don't have any right to intimidate these law officers you don't even have a right to carry a gun even if it's holstered or unloaded uh, these guns are dangerous these are the things that they're doing 
one thing they, they, the government flip-flops back and forth on. The government bears all uh, uh, pr uh, burden, of bur proof. burden of proof. And they said that in the jury um, instructions that the government doesn't need burden of proof. And so they go flip-flop back and forth saying that just as evidence alone proves it, but the government does not have to bear a burden of proof for you to find them guilty. And um, they also stated that the internet is a way of interstate commerce, that it's like a building. If you're uh, impeding people even on the internet, that is, it's, you can be charged with interstate commerce, uh, it's a crime. And that these, uh, it's a facility. The internet is a facility. And with you posting things on the internet, if it makes the government or these BLM agents fearful, that's also a way of impeding these federal officers just by posting a post on Facebook again. It, um, the judge laughs quite loudly at the defendants when they were arguing their motions. And yes, she, she just made fun of them and just tells them that they, they are not going to play these certain videos to the jurors. They're not going to arrest jury nullification again. That's a big thing that we've heard over and over and over again is jury nullification outside the ears of the jurors. You got to take this for granted. These are motions that are being heard with the jurors not in the room. And the judge and the prosecutor here is very fearful that um, there might be jury nullification in this case and they do not want to take that chance. So they're repeating, they're repeating, repeating and repeating. denying us um, tons and tons of motions, tons and tons of exhibits that are evidence already in this case, but we're not going to play it to the jurors. Um, when the jurors walked in, she tells them that the defendants have a right to closing arguments. But she, what she doesn't tell them, and she's acting really nice to them, is that they have a right to closing arguments, but they don't have a right to all the closing arguments, that they're being micromanaged with these closing arguments. So there's still a lot of stuff's being held, held How back. How long was it, though, that they have been speaking? He's not even done. He hasn't closed yet. All morning. Over two hours? Over two, well, started at 8.30 this right. morning. I would say the jurors at came in at 9. nine? So three and a half hours of closing of arguments. Of prosecution. So only one lawyer is up there, pro the prosecutor. And all he is get he gets free reign. Free reign. Playing videos after videos after videos. Uh, exhibits and pictures. All this stuff pretty much we've seen before. It, um, you are responsible, the prosecutor said, for others' action while in the act of a crime, even if you showed up after the fact. So like Jerry DeLuma showed up a day later, he's responsible for everyone's actions, even on the 12th when he didn't even show up on the 13th. And um, so this kind of sums up most of what we have to say. Um, we've got um, a few statements here that Eric Parker said here. One thing I thought was very interesting, Eric Parker said that in, in a video that that Clive and Bundy, he basically fired the BLM. Right. And the judge, or uh, the prosecutors played this to the jurors a day that what's what he said. And that's exactly what he done. He felt the overreach of federal government and he wants these BLM officers out of this state. They have no jurisdiction here. And this has been proved over and over again. But the federal government, that's not on trial they're trying to prove. But what's on trial is these guys had other crimes, impeding federal officers, conspiracy against the federal government. So that um, kind of sums up what we've got here right now. Well, but there's so much that so the much jury more. does not know. Oh, the yeah. jury does not know about Harry Reid being a, having a ranch next nearby, the Bundy Ranch. All this stuff's being headed here. They're, they don't know that Harry Reid assigned the judge her position. I was looking at some pages of evidences here that is redacted. Page after page after page of stuff is redacted from the jurors, and all they get to see is a little bitty Facebook post, and it's in evidence, but the, but the federal government has redacted all these pages keeping these, this evidence from the jurors because it's not this evidence they don't need to see. It might cause jury notification. So They also do not recognize the uh, freedom of, a, of a Americans to be able to stand armed against the tyranny of the government. They're not even allowing them to understand the Constitution and, and they just keep dismissing that it, the, saying that's not it, that's not right. That that's, was in the jury instructions, telling mm -hmm. them you don't have a right absolutely at all 
ever to stand against the federal government at all, even protesting if you have a gun on or right. have anything. You have First Amendment areas uh, as they set up there, and the government stressed that. We set these um, First Amendment areas up, these safe zones, for these people to be. The rest of the park, the rest of all this desert was closed off to the public. They had a safe zone. They were to be there. That's why we set it up, because we had work to do. If you get out of that First Amendment area, then you're impeding federal officers. Whether you have a gun or not, you was not allowed out of that First Amendment area. That First Amendment area was seven miles from where the cows were. I saw it myself yesterday. We went out there yesterday with a big group of people. We took a tour of um, the wash area. I saw where the, the BLM had practiced their shooting to prepare for war. Yes, they did, exactly. We picked up bullets. We picked up bullet casings that are still there from three years ago where the BLM done all this protesting. It looks like they're making it back around again. So um, they made their first round. We've got a good group of people out here, a lot of children that came today. And um, so we're thankful for all the support. A lot of flags. We're gonna have to rush up there yes, just we soon. Because we've got just a few minutes to get back up there. But thanks again for joining us. Close to five o'clock, hopefully we can be back out. As you know, we're late today. We was hoping to do this at noon and we're over an hour late already. We're still not out of prosecutor uh, testimony still or got closing more, argument. Uh, closing arguments with the prosecutors and still haven't even got the first defendant up there yet to do closing arguments. But Todd Engel is doing closing arguments for himself, even if it is micromanaged. That's right. God bless. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll be back again as quick as we can this evening at 5 o'clock. So as you can hear and see from John Lamb himself, Judge Navarro, is trying to portray the BLM as not doing anything wrong. Judge Andrew Napolitano even admitted years ago that the BLM had moved in heavy-handedness with those automatic weapons and aggressively. If you enjoy this video and the information that I provide for you, please give me a thumbs up as well as subscribe to my channel. Don't forget if you subscribe to my channel and you want to get notifications on the videos that I put out and the news that I get out to the people, please make sure that you go to that little bell and hit to be subscribe on the notifications. Otherwise, you will not be notified when any new videos come out. I would like to also invite you to join the conference call radio show broadcast that I have joined with Courtroom Watch, Eric Hughes-Jones. Uh, on their conference call and their line number is 515-604-9703 and the participant code is 754-153-POUND. I look forward to hearing from you there. I do do updates when it comes to government situations and different things that most media are not covering and usually have time for question and answer sessions. I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to you joining the call. I am going to be um, hosting the call tomorrow night, which is April the 13th, 2017, from 9 through 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope you join me. As always, watch your backs, check your facts. Simplified Ellis, and good night.